Hi everyone, welcome to Dragonfly Projects and Homestead. My name is Alex and this is my review of the Woodland Mills Stump Grinder. You'll excuse me if I'm wearing long sleeves and gloves, it's mosquito season right now and they are big and they are hungry. First off, I'll start with why I wanted a stump grinder. I am in the process of establishing a Yupik orchard and a Yupik Christmas tree farm. Currently, they are open fields like the one behind me but this used to be wooded and there are a lot of tree stumps so i have a couple problems one i can't plant wherever i want because if i am on a stump then i'll have to move where i want to plant the tree which might mess with my spacing and i like to maximize the space i have and two if i have people coming here to pick fruit or pick their own christmas tree the last thing i want is them tripping and hurting themselves I also am looking to expand both the orchard and the Christmas tree farm. If you want to follow those series, I have a series for the orchard and a series for the Christmas tree farm. That means I am going to have to cut down at least three acres worth of mostly birch. So that means bring it down, process it and grind the stumps so that I can have a nice flat level surface to work with. So that's the why. If I only had 10 stumps, I could have used something like a, uh, a burn barrel, so a steel burn barrel, throw the barrel on top, light a fire in it, and just wait a day. There's also ways with chemicals to destroy the stumps, or you can always slash it with the chainsaw and then set it on fire for the same uh, kind of effect as the burn barrel, but those processes take time. And I have thousands of stumps to get rid of. Right now, with this stump grinder, I've used it to remove hundreds of stumps already, just to get started with the orchard and the Christmas tree farm and it's been absolutely fantastic for me. There are different kinds of models. You can have a more expensive model that instead of being uh, perpendicular to the tractor will be in line and then using your rear remotes you can control it. So there is a downside to this uh, grinder which is you have to maneuver the tractor a lot more but a more simple design makes for a cheaper product, not in terms of quality, but in terms of cost. I believe this uh, stump grinder from Woodland Mills was 2600 before tax and before shipping, Canadian, um, which made it one of the more affordable options. Renting a stump grinder could have been an option for me, but like I said, I have thousands of trees to come down and thousands of stumps to grind, so it was just simpler for me to buy it and do it at my own pace. I found Woodland Mills through uh, looking for a sawmill, so I have a nice sawmill in my shopping cart waiting to pull the trigger on that one, but quite expensive. This was affordable for now and was needed for now for me to start the orchard and the Christmas tree farm. There are other offerings. This is the one I went with because they seem to make quality product at an affordable price and so far I absolutely love it. Let me walk you around the kind of setup you have to do and how it works. When I received the stump grinder, it was very well packaged inside of a metal shipping crate. Uh, an 18 wheeler basically stopped at the street and the driver uh, called me and said, come pick it up. I took the tractor and I had to unload it. Just so you know, the guy only had a little pallet uh, mover. So there was no way for them to unload it from the truck and bring it to my house. I had to go pick it up with a tractor something you might want to know if you're ordering something like this. So this thing came already pre-assembled. The only thing I had to add was this had to be added, the plate that avoids the kickback from the wood chips. This is a chainsaw holder. So the bar goes in here, the chainsaw rests on here and you can just tighten it down so you can move around with your chainsaw if you have to. And this plate here was flipped upside down so it was a lower profile for shipping. The PTO shaft may have to be cut. There are instructions on how to cut it if you have to cut it. Basically, you have to measure and figure out your spacing. I think if you have a smaller tractor, the spacing here will be smaller. My tractor, I only had an inch, give or take, of play before I would have had to cut it. Remember, if you're cutting the PTO shaft, there are four parts. There's two guards, one on each side, and there's two shafts, one that goes into the other one. You have to cut four, all four of them. So let's say I want to shorten it an inch, you have to cut an inch off every single part, not just one, okay? The other thing that had to be set up is this has a clutch, a slip clutch. So what you do is you untighten every single bolt so the springs are nice and loose. You run the PTO so it slips 
and they show you how to do this. You can mark it to make sure that it slips. Also, if you have an open cab or your back window is open, you can hear it slip. Once that's done, you have to tighten the springs to the setting that matches your PTO's power on your tractor. In my case, I have about 34 horsepower to the PTO. So I went with the closest, which was 35 horsepower setting. So the spring height, I think in my case, was 30.8 millimeters. So I would tighten every spring and I would measure the height of the spring so it matched the power rating on my PTO. Because if your tractor is too strong and the spring is not loaded enough, you're just gonna slip the clutch every time. So you have to make sure that you're at the proper setting. Also, they give you an adapter. You have to double check that every single teeth has the right torque spec. They come pre-torque from factory, but you wanna make sure that everything is set up properly. It comes with some really nice grease points everywhere. Everything is big, solid steel. There is some nice grease points everywhere. One thing to note is when it ships and when you're storing it, you have to drop down the feet so you can just unclip. So you can just unclip this. Remove this and then drop it down and then you would just secure it in place. And when you're using it, it's all the way up and secured. The other thing is when it's not in use, there is an extra pin here. It goes in here and it locks the head so that the head can't swivel. So these line, these holes here would align and then you put the pin and that would secure it. You want to take the pin out when you're using it because you want the head to be able to have just a little bit of flex so you're not putting all the strain on the PTO shaft. When I got the stump grinder, I also bought the extra kit that came with six extra set of carbide teeth, just in case something does happen. And instead of ordering and being down for a while, I just wanna make sure that I can keep doing what I have to do. Let me show you some footage of the grinder in action.
So the big question, am I satisfied with my purchase? The answer is extremely. Very satisfied, the price was right, shipping was fast, uh, it's a Canadian company, I'm happy to support local-ish, uh, I think they're in the Toronto area or north of Toronto. I'm very happy to support a Canadian company, even better an Ontarian company. They make a great affordable product, it works very well. I'm lucky right now that 90% of the tree stumps I have to go through are fairly rotten or started to rot so it's fairly quick to go through every stump probably takes me a minute per stump right now because once you get the hang of it you get more efficient uh, they give you some suggestions on how to approach a stump they say that you want this part as much as possible to grind and then just work your way through the stump as it is the strongest part and the way the wheel rotates that is the easiest way to put the less strain on the machine and the tractor you take small bites at a time. They say it can go up to six inches below ground, but to be honest, depending on the terrain and the tractor, um, I can almost do a foot below ground. And the other option would have been to rent a mini excavator and excavate every single tree stump. But the problem is once you've removed that tree stump, you have a gaping hole to fill. While in this case, I am making wood chips that I'm using to refill the hole. One, it's nice and level. Two, I'm keeping the nutrients in the ground and I'm breaking it down faster so it's easier and I'm composting at the same time. So I feel like it's a win-win-win situation. Yes, the other version that is articulated and uses the rear remotes would be more convenient uh, ergon ergonomics-wise. Uh, the positioning when I'm running the machine, as you saw, not ideal, but a couple, um, maybe I'll do 100 stumps a day and then I'll just continue another day and then just work my way from there because I own it I'm not in a rush to get things done right now I've done everything I had to do to plan this year and now I'll slowly chip away at it for the years to come everyone also has different case uses for this um, the good thing about in my case is sometimes the tree stumps are so rotten that when I dig under the whole thing explodes the roots come with it so I'm very happy to know that the whole thing's gone um, for some of the newer trees from what I heard from what I've read from what I've seen once the tree is really uh, ground down to underneath the surface beneath the surface very very rare that the tree will try to grow again especially if you've damaged the root system because and I have a lot of red maples here that are famous for this or infamous for this it's basically what they call coppicing you cut down the tree and then the next spring everything uh, sprouts up again and usually if you cut it once, then the next spring you'll have three shoots. You cut those three again, and the next spring you have eight shoots. And red maples are notorious for that. So hopefully this process will eliminate that. Or hopefully I'll only have to do it maybe once or twice again before the tree completely stops trying to grow and just decomposes in the soil. But yes, at the end of the day, very satisfied, very happy with this. I would uh, highly recommend it. If you want to run a stump grinding business, then it is a uh, not too expensive investment to get started. Obviously it has to be attached to a tractor. And if you want to grind stumps as a business, you're gonna to have to find a way to move your tractor or travel with your tractor. So there are pushable versions that you can rent, but they're a lot smaller and not as powerful. This served my purpose. The price was right. The quality is amazing. Um, there's a lot of products from Woodland Mills that I hope to acquire eventually, especially a wood chipper for the tractor, so I can get started on my piles, wood chip everything, mulch everything, and use it as a nice natural fertilizer, mulch, and weed block. And there's sawmill. That would be my dream goal eventually, get the sawmill. I have a ton of wood around here, and I just can't wait to finally get enough money together to justify buying the sawmill and get started on a lot of projects. If you guys are interested to see the stump grinder in action, stick around, subscribe. I still have a lot more stumps to grind and a lot more work to do. If you're curious about the orchard project, make sure to check out that playlist. And if you're curious about the Christmas tree farm, make sure to also check out that playlist. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions about this particular stump grinder, ask away. I'll do my best to answer your questions to the best of my abilities. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Take care.